In the ever-expanding world of live stream, most professional streamers at the top levels become known for things. So Leslie, will you, will you marry me? <laughs> That's how you get AIDS. My name is Peppa. <laughs> no. Whether it's XQC, for Overwatch and 12 hour streams. This mother agency is so gross and thinks the world revolves around money. This is the only thing he uses as a comeback anytime someone criticizes him. Money is the only thing he has since he can't maintain any interpersonal relationship in his life. True. Valkyrie for Fortnite and Among Us. Oh, oh, oh. oh God, okay. Hokey Main for League of Legends. I also, I can't compare these. But here's my plan. I'm gonna vote. Is, is it pronounced Froggen? Frogan? Or DSP for getting caught. <laughs> Especially during the pandemic, we saw many content creators blowing up. Everyone was forced to stay at home, inside, and we found some new ways to socialize. One content creator who seemed to explode in growth during the pandemic is someone named Frogan. Frogan got her start in the Hassan Abi community. She's half Lebanese and half white. Her mom gave her the name Morgan because. Me and your dad were in a fight at the time that I was delivering you, so I wanted to give you the whitest name that I could find because it would make him the most mad. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> what? One side of her family is Christian, and one side of her family is Muslim. She seems to identify more with the Muslim side. Put my scarf on when I was nine fucking years old. So I've been covered head to toe for most of my life. Was there a reason I started at nine? So I went to a private school, and it was a part of the uniform at third grade. But anyways, my dad said that if I put the scarf on, he'd give me a whole new wardrobe, and I never got it, so. She does say that her father was not very religious. Here's the thing though, like my dad was strict, but he wasn't like, we didn't have to hide shit from him. You know what I mean? He's not, he's not, he was never religious. He just cared about his reputation. Yeah. Reputation is an interesting thing. Recently, Frogan's gotten into controversy that's tarnished her reputation. Where did this all start? If you look at Frogan's online history, she's been online for quite some time. She was pretty active on Tumblr and Twitter prior to being a streamer, but mostly was obsessed with emo bands. She especially was into Fallout Boy. She also just seems to fangirl a lot over male celebrities. It makes sense, given her obsession with emo boy bands, that she would be a huge fan of Hassan. She seems to have a type, men who are very counterculture. Hassan's community became the perfect place for her. She could foster a super parasocial relationship with him while propping herself up as another streamer engaged in leftist politics and counterculture. She could attach her identity to being an orbiter and a stan and gain attention from her status and how hard she white knights for her favorite creators. Back to her reputation. I think Haynes has like some of the best chicken tenders. But it's not Frogan. Nothing compares to Wingstop. Okay, so like I was saying, back to her reputation. Frogan's been in a lot of controversy recently, from tasteless tweets during a tragedy to feuding with Ethan Klein over the words she's chosen. Frogan claims she's not anti-Semitic, but many people rightfully have doubts. The question is, is she being honest about this? or about anything. I'm going to tell you a story. The story isn't in order, but it's for a reason. So sit back and let me unravel things for you. By the end of this story, you'll have no doubt in your mind what the answer is. Littered across social media and said in various interviews, 
you'll find the words public health expert everywhere in relation to Frogan. It's a pretty big title to attach to yourself. You'd either need to be an expert in the field or have an inflated ego to even think about doing it. What is a public health expert? When evaluating someone's expertise in a field, it's important to understand the stages that come before expertise. Many people within the health policy field, as well as many other fields, refer to the Dreyfus model as a way of determining an individual's progress in their field. The Dreyfus model explains things in the following way. When acquiring skills in a field, people pass through five phases of knowledge. These phases are novice, advanced beginner, competent, proficient, and expert. Just to give some clarity on the difference between these levels, a novice has an incomplete understanding, approaches tasks mechanistically, and needs supervision to complete them, while an expert has an authoritative or deep holistic understanding, deals with routine matters intuitively, and is able to go beyond existing interpretations also achieves excellence with ease. Most people would consider a public health expert as someone who has specialized knowledge to help deal with public health epidemics and emergencies. Does Frogan meet that? I graduated in 2021 and I finally got a computer. Well, actually I'd started streaming briefly in 2020, uh, but once I had to start writing my thesis, I just stopped streaming because I was so distracted. And my advisor told me that if I don't make any progress, I'm not going to graduate on time. I was so distracted. And my advisor told me that if I don't make any progress, I'm not going to graduate on time. So I'm not going to graduate on time. I'm sorry. Um, were you having trouble? <laughs> Brogan has a master's in public health. She graduated in 2021. Brogan claims prior to streaming, she had five years of research experience under her belt. After attaining her master's, she worked for two years before quitting her job to stream full time. I went full time uh, almost a year ago to date. I put my two weeks in a year ago, a couple days ago. Well, <laughs> I saw my boss. Yeah. Thank you. My boss wanted to discuss my performance with uh, the manager of my department. So I was like streaming full time and working full time. So I do like 40 hours a week streaming, 40 uh, research, and I was just like dead. Um, and when, as soon as I saw that in the calendar invite, I sent my two weeks in and I haven't looked back. Brogan essentially hints that she wasn't doing well at her job before she quit. Based on what she says about her choice to give her two weeks notice, that she was working 40 hours a week while streaming 40 hours a week, seems likely that her boss was calling a meeting to discuss subpar performance at the job. So, being generous, if I were to say that her master's took one to two years, and again, being generous, if I were to say that she worked in public health and got on the job experience for two more years, we would still find that exceedingly inadequate for someone to call themselves an expert in their field. Pair that with the Dreyfus model for determining someone's competency in their field, it seems the highest level I could give Frogan would be advanced beginner or competent, especially given that she performed poorly towards the end of her nine to five job. Generally, experts in the public health field seem to have a minimum of eight years of experience. Simply having a master's in public health doesn't make you an expert in public health. Generally, you need to have a master's, possibly a PhD, and you need to have extensive experience in the public health field. Two years wouldn't cut it. You'd also hopefully have published research papers and engaged in peer review. You'd hopefully be recognized by peers in your field as an expert, not just recognized by yourself. So ask yourself again, is she being honest?
Rogan has taken to Twitter many times to overshare and write stories about the many injustices she's faced in her daily life. Like, girl, we didn't ask for all that. But whatever. When you closely examine some of these stories, the holes start to show through. One of the first examples of this that I've come across was a story that Brogan told around 2021. Thinking about the time when my professor assigned me the only Arab in the class to do a project about the Arab-Israeli conflict and failed me when I talked about how Palestine is occupied by Israel. There are a couple of things here. The way she frames this story, she hints that this was assigned to her because of discrimination and that she was failed for telling the truth. We aren't given any further details. What were the notes the professor gave for the project? What were the sources she used for this assignment? Why was she the only one assigned this project? What kind of class was this? I decided to look through her tweets and see if she gave any other details on the situation. The next tweet where she talks about this is from 2017. I'll never forget when I had to write about the Arab-Israeli conflict and my professor gave me an F because what I said about Israel was wrong. The second tweet doesn't give much detail either. The third tweet referencing this story is from 2016 and a reply to another tweet. This is like when my professor made me write about the Arab-Israeli conflict and gave me a D on the paper. It wouldn't be a Frogan tweet without some self-victimization peppered in there. Me, the only hijabi in the class. The interesting thing in this tweet is that she still doesn't give any details, but a specific detail is different from what she has said previously. She says that she got a D, not an F. So most recently, Frogan got into a fight with Ethan Klein for her wording in a certain tweet. The tweet that she and Ethan fought over was actually written during a stream of hers. On February 29th, she started off by talking about her session with her therapist that day. I had therapy today, it was my second session, and she was like, so has there anything, anything happened since the last time you saw me so basically some shit happened with a creator I talked to my therapist about and then I gave her like the rundown of everything that happened like on social media. She was like, yeah, you know, like sometimes we need to filter yourself ourselves like we don't need to say everything on our mind. Like, for example, somebody could be wearing the same pair of underwear for a week and then that doesn't mean they have to go off and tweet about their stinky vagina. Yeah, that was me. I was like, what? I was like, I was like what is happening here? which by the way, I think is hilarious. She then goes on to talk about an incident that made her question being with her current therapist. But thing is that, what are those? Kind of set me off and kind of gave me the it is, so then I, I brought up Palestine. I was like, I talk political issues, I was talking about Palestine. And then, it's, then she said, she said the kicker. So this time in particular, I went out of my way to find a woman of color therapist because I thought there'd be some empathy and relation to my experiences as a, a visual minority, a visible minority. And I started talking, I started talking about my like, Palestine and everything. And then she's like, yeah, like as a black woman, I don't really care about what's happening in Palestine because in America, I could walk outside and get shot for who I am as a black woman or or discriminated against and I leave my house because I'm a black woman. So to me, Palestine is just another place. I'm like, you know what? I I'm kind of giving up on therapy. He's completely dismissive of her therapist's words and interprets them in the worst way possible. It could have been just as simple as a the therapist saying in an offhand comment that she doesn't know about it. 
she could have still been willing to listen to Frogan and hear her talk about her feelings, as well as help her with her coping methods. If it truly happened the way she's describing it, she should discontinue seeing that therapist. But I have my doubts because it wouldn't be the first time that she took a therapist's actions or anyone's actions in the worst possible light. And here, Brogan sends the tweet that launched a thousand ships. Okay, so here's my tweet. Started therapy after five years. Start therapy five years after a bad experience with a Zionist therapist. Saw a woman of color therapist assuming relative empathy. Mentioned Palestine and new therapist sees it as just another place and not caring or being knowledgeable due to discrimination she faces in America. She receives backlash immediately. Keep in mind that Frogan at this point has a history of pretty problematic tweets. The way she has referred to Zionists in the past is strange. And while it isn't a problem all of the time, a decent amount of people are referring to Jews when they say the word Zionist. So it's reasonable for a lot of people on Twitter to take issue with the tweet and question her. When Ethan Klein notices the tweet, he calls out Frogan on his show. I'm going to say this because it pissed me the f off. And being an anti-Semite openly and proudly is now likes on Twitter. Rogan, she tweeted out, she goes, my Zion, I have a problem with my, uh, with my Zionist therapist. Just call him a f Jew. I'm sorry, but that, you can't talk like that about any other f minority. I had a problem with my Zionist therapist. What you taught your Zionist therapist? Did you get that those level of details from them? You 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 had an in-depth conversation about the politics of Zionism with your therapist? No, I know what you mean. You mean Jew. He makes a good point. When is it acceptable to target any group like this? It's hypocritical for Frogan, someone who's very quick to talk about discrimination she faces, to do this. Frogan replies trying to explain herself. When I say my therapist was a Zionist, when I went back to her in 2019, I mean, she literally brought up that I was Lebanese unprompted and confronted me on it saying she was Israeli. She asked if I had a problem with that, if I felt like Israel had a right to exist, started asking more and more if I was frustrated with Islam and have considered taking off my hijab. I asked her if she was all right with me being Lebanese and she, Got really aggressive, accusing me of flipping it on her and refused to answer. So when I say Zionist, I don't mean she was Jewish. I mean, she was a racist Israeli who could not help herself but to confront me about my ethnicity and what was supposed to be a therapy session. So remember that word, unprompted. Now, Frogan goes on to elaborate further. She replies to her own tweet saying, Here's me talking about it the day it happened, briefly 4.5 years ago. I just went to therapy for the first time, and after talking about my dad fleeing the Israel-Lebanon war, she was like, I'm Israeli, do you have any issues with me being your therapist? Bruh, I was so taken aback. My mom told me I should switch because that wasn't professional. What are your thoughts on this? Because I'm genuinely so conflicted right now. Comparing her original tweet and the story she tweeted at Ethan, the stories are glaringly different. The original claim was that the therapist asked her, do you have an issue with me being your therapist? Which is vastly different from she confronted me on being Muslim, asked if Israel had the right to exist, if I was frustrated with Islam, whether I've considered taking off my hijab. Wouldn't all of this have made it into the original tweet if that's what actually happened? It's almost like she's underhandedly saying this Israeli Zionist Jew saw my hijab and is trying to brainwash me. The only explanation for why her story changed so much is that she was traumatized by it so much that she didn't want to tell the whole thing. But we all know if that actually happened, it would have been in the original tweet because she'd be grasping at any chance to play victim. The story only changed when she needed to save her. She added all these details to make the therapist seem way worse. But remember when I said, remember that word? Remember when Frogan said unprompted? Does this look unprompted to you? She quite literally brings it up first, saying, after talking about my dad fleeing the Israel-Lebanon war, 
Where is the unprompted part here? Make it make sense. Additionally, it seems like the therapist was being considerate. It looks like Frogan is being dishonest here. Her therapist was looking out for her. It makes sense that if she has trauma surrounding the Israel-Lebanon war, that she might have some feelings about having an Israeli therapist. And she would even agree with that therapist. When I started therapy a few years back, my therapist being Muslim, I was so uncomfortable at the thought because I didn't want her judging me. But she was the best person I've ever met. It's important to have a mental health worker that understands your culture slash religion. Another thing to note is the inconsistencies every time she's told this story. She's told it many times. So, is she being honest? I don't really think so. I mean, look at how she even talks about Ethan responding to her tweet. See how they are. Ethan came after me again, unprompted. I got pinned as an anti-Semite and I had to do a response. It's fucking dumb. Unprompted yet again. So, she says she got pinned as an anti-Semite. I wonder why people might think that about her. I mean, look at the way that she talks about Zionists. Is there really a difference between the KKK and Zionists? So, why do some of you go out of your way to see a film with a Zionist in the leading role? If you said yes, what's the difference? She is a Zionist. She deserves to be bothered. Zionism justifies the killing of Palestinian people so they can take back their homeland. Stop defending a Zionist. Would you defend somebody in ISIS? The best version of yourself will never happen when you're a Zionist. Why are Zionists socially accepted? Hollywood's idea of showing America how not elitist they are is by gracing a theater full of normies with their presence and chuck them hot dogs. I would hate to be in the same room with a Zionist. What does this even mean? Hassan is talking about Hollywood and she brings up Zionists. Is she doing the Zionists run Hollywood trope? We know where that came from, right? Blank runs Hollywood. Also, it's a little bit dehumanizing and troubling to see her talk about not wanting to be in the same room with a Zionist. It feels weird. So with all these tweets, can you blame anyone for thinking she is anti-Semitic or worse? And it turns out her current therapist was right about one thing. She could have avoided this entire fiasco. She was like, yeah, you know, like sometimes we need to filter yourself ourselves like we don't need to say everything on our mind. Like, for example, somebody could be wearing the same pair of underwear for a week, and then that doesn't mean they have to go off and tweet about their stinky vagina. Stinky vagina. Stinky vagina. Stinky As we step backwards, we need to address when Ethan and Frogan had their first dust up. On October 7th, Hamas operatives and other radical Islamist groups in Gaza launched a surprise attack on Israel. In the early morning hours, social media was flooded with graphic images and videos. People watched innocent civilians brutalized, lives snuffed out, and the remains of those lives desecrated. It was already a hard sight for any person who came across those images and videos. For someone connected to the conflict, it was probably a living nightmare. But for others, they acted first and thought later. They took the opportunity to virtue signal in the worst moment possible. Leftists preach and foam at the mouth at the thought of a revolution happening in America. But as soon as it happens in the Middle East, what they're doing is wrong. Frogan tweeted this at 5.28 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 11.28 a.m. in Israel. That's before the attack was even finished in Israel and before they finished counting bodies. Ethan decided to unfollow her after days of her tweeting completely unhinged things following the October 7th attack. Ethan's wife, Hila, 
is from Israel and still has family in Israel. Instead of looking at her behavior on social media and doing some critical thinking about why she was unfollowed, she started to post on social media about it. That feel when one of your favorite content creators unfollows for being pro-Palestine. Hey, dumb. Being pro-Hamas isn't being pro-Palestine, just so you know. And then, when that wasn't enough, she took to Hassan's Discord. Ethan Klein unfollowed me. Well, Mao. Why am I sad? L-N-O. Ethan, all support the IDS. Rebollow me. Ethan probably was like, this damn Arab supports Hamas. It's disgusting and disgraceful for her to make an accusation of racism against Ethan with no evidence to do so. It cheapens it when anyone actually does have a legitimate accusation against someone for being racist. Unfortunately, as we've seen, this is a mainstay in Frogan's behavior. She has an incredible victim complex and cheapens everything that she touches. It's a great game if you want a cooperative game to play with your friends, whether it be you just chilling at night or you want something competitive. They f***ed up Sonic! She f***ed up Sonic! Frogan, the dumb person I don't like on the internet, just got promoted by Sonic the Hedgehog. They're ruining the franchise. It's f***ing over, dude. It's f***ing over, dude. This guy. Like I said, she cheapens everything she touches. By the way, remember when Frogan implied Ethan takes shots at her unprompted? Ethan came after me again, unprompted. I just qu quietly unfollowed her, okay? I didn't like the tweets she was making. I thought they were, like, leaning too much towards pro-Hamas. And I just didn't like it. I didn't want to see it. And so I quietly unfollowed her. I didn't make a big deal. I didn't say anything. But, like, she got to turn it into this whole big thing that turns into a drama that's now being posted all over the internet. What's unprompted about this? She literally did what her therapist pointed out she has a problem with. Taking her stinky thoughts and stinky opinions to anyone who will listen. It's unnecessary. And it gets worse. That face when one of your favorite content creators unfollows you for being pro-Palestine. Like, first of all, the framing of that is up okay let's not even go there you don't even know why i unfollowed you you don't know you, you don't have no information we've never even talked ethan prob was like this damn arab supports hamas that's not funny that's not funny at all like the whole framing of this is really cruel ethan i'll support the idf refollow me i don't support the idf either it's not funny she goes but as soon as it happens in the middle east what they're doing is wrong she's implying that what hamas is doing is right I mean, she's basically all but saying it. She's saying, as soon as a revolution happens in the Middle East, then all of a sudden what they're doing is wrong. She's saying, in her opinion, that what they're doing is right because it's a revolution. It was just wanton, blatant, full-blown <laughs> depravity, okay? And uh, if you think that that's right, then I don't, I don't want to know you. And I think that's fair. Unfortunately, Frogan's response isn't much better. And then, and then I made a joke. I was like, Ethan, I'll support the IDF. Refollow me. And then I made another joke. I was like, Ethan probably was like, damn, this, this damn Arab supports Hamas. Which he kind of implied that I support Hamas, which I don't. I don't believe that those are jokes. You know how Hassan's chat has been reacting to Ethan since the 7th. You knew at least a decent portion would take you seriously. Secondly, he didn't imply you supported Hamas. You did. I responded to him. I said, I did not say children and burning families alive is a revolution. You kind of did. It is a tactic Israel has, used, has specialized in for over 70 years. I haven't seen you post about their This is just cheap whataboutism. Secondly, he has talked about the Palestinian people. Even if he didn't, he's not the one who made this beef public. You are. Your first post here in the past week is to call me out for supporting Palestinians fighting back. Again, because you made a big deal of him unfollowing you. What is revolution to you if not overthrowing prison guards that keep 2 million people from leaving, shelling their homes, wantonly killing civilians, mostly children, for the past 70 years to the, to the approval of international community? The American Revolution was fought over for less than the unrelenting massacre of their people. I don't even know what to say here. Are you supporting Hamas's actions or not? 
because what happened on October 7th was solely Hamas and other radical Islamist groups. Are you not aware of this? Why, is, why are you leaning towards me being pro Hamas? Is it because I am an Arab Muslim girl? Is this, is, this, is this the life of an Arab Muslim girl on the internet? I tweet something pro-Palestine? Yeah, the funny hat I wear? Yeah. The funny hat I wear? Is, is, that, is that what's giving it pro-Hamas? Oh, I know this one. It's just a joke, guys. She's not implying anybody's racist, right? As we can see just from Frogan's initial reactions, instead of trying to remain somewhat level-headed, Frogan implies that Ethan Klein is racist and that it would be crazy to think that Frogan supports Hamas. But would it really be crazy to think that? Leftists preach and foam at the mouth at the thought of a revolution happening in America, but as soon as it happens in the Middle East, what they're doing is wrong. Civilian deaths, okay. Still, where was this energy for Palestinians for all these years? Next video idea. People on Twitter will suck the toes of Ukraine, but draw the line at Palestine. Where has the empathy been for Palestinians since 1948? Be so real right now, Lamau. As an Arab, the history of the occupation of Palestine was instilled in my upbringing and the first topic I was ever politically aware about. If you are uneducated about a topic, you do not have to speak on everything. Ask questions, listen, and learn. Okay, so I can't speak as an Arab, but I can speak as a Muslim. And yes, it's true that a lot of us grow up learning about Palestine, learning about Israel, learning about that conflict. That does not mean that you excuse terrible crimes against humanity. This is not a team sport. These are lives. With all of this back and forth, of course we would see this drama bleed over right into the podcast that Hassan and Ethan host together, Leftovers. In the last episode of Leftovers, Ethan and Hassan talk on stream about the Israel-Palestine conflict. Ethan brings up Twitter to critique the actions of Frogan and people like Frogan in a roundabout way. I don't think people who say, I support Palestine are pro-Hamas. That's insane. Okay. It's, an it's like the opposite of everything I've ever said, okay? There is something I noticed that rubbed me wrong, which was that as the news was breaking, as people were still calling in saying, I'm in my safe house, I hear the terrorists yeah. outside my neighbors. People are on Twitter or whatever, or activists, whoever, saying, uh, let's go Palestine, go Palestine. So how am I, it's the timing, Hassan. I'm, it's important, like, we got to make this huge distinction. When people are saying, go Palestine, as they're terrorist people, that, to me, I don't know who else they're cheering on other than Hamas. In his usual fashion, Hassan gets very cagey, trying to excuse the actions that Ethan is describing. Here's, there is a, there's an asymmetry to the violence, but there's also an asymmetry to <coughs> the coverage as well. Okay, asymmetry. I don't know how that's relevant. So let me let me ask you this, though. Yeah. When Lindsey Graham goes on and says this is a religious war and we must ethnically cleanse, uh, we must wipe our Evil. enemies. Should get when, the same coverage. No, I know, but it but it doesn't, Ethan. What about ism? All right. At a certain point, Ethan seems to know that he isn't getting the acknowledgement he needs. Just to get a direct answer where as the terrorist attacks are happening, there's people calling saying my neighbors are being shot by terrorists right now and there's people saying go palestine are they talking about palestinian freedom or are they encouraging hamas the israelis i don't know this entire conversation seems to be ethan trying to get hassan to acknowledge how terrible the timing is and actually condemn people celebrating before the dust has even settled it's part of his broader point that people need to be able to empathize with their enemies Hassan, for whatever reason, seems unwilling to do that and dances around this for hours. Like, I, your, your take about, like, listen, um, Gazans are under apartheid, they're, they're being genocided and all this, which is all true. And that and is so, what's causing so, this violent retaliation. And it's what's causing this retaliation, yes. which is all true. I'm sorry, but it's not the fucking same. 
as saying, let's go Palestine as bodies are hitting the floor. At some point, they wrap up the show and Ethan apologizes to Frogan, which I still don't think he was wrong to be upset over. I don't want to question Hassan's motives here, but given his history of problematic tweets, his usage of racially based insults, skin incels, and his denial of <laughs> that took place on October 7th, I wonder why Hassan is covering for Frogan. Does he have something to hide? I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I want to show it briefly because I think it's important. After more talks about Israel and Palestine, Ethan realizes that he doesn't think he can talk further about the conflict. As usual, Brogan jumps on the moment to criticize him. She volunteers her stinky opinion once again. I think it's pretty insensitive and honestly indicative that you're coming from a place of privilege if you can't see why Ethan wouldn't be able to talk about this topic at length. I think Hutch said it best. Ethan spent literal hours unflinchingly criticizing Israel and thousands of deranged idiots still spammed his socials with accusations of being a Zionist war criminal being leveled at both him and his wife. Can you not understand why he would want to avoid the topic for now? At some point after their last Leftovers episode, Ethan and Hassan have a call where they talk about the conflict again. Ethan, at a certain point in that call, takes a look at Hassan's chat and asks him about what they're saying about him. And what they are saying is pretty nasty. What white people who are against Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter have to say about the slogan itself, then why would I listen to people who are defending Israel on what this slogan means? Because the broader majority, the broadest majority of people who consider this to be an anti-Semitic slogan are, you, in my opinion, deploying care. it cynically. Like, you, not you. Really you. Not By you. the way, I'm not even defending the, I'm not even like, I'm just tell, I'm just trying to tell you guys how it feels. And I'm shocked that you don't care that people in your chat are saying who the fuck is this child cold Ethan, arrogant Ethan, this fuck i love you but there is but there's only so much i can how do how can you be surprised when your discord is literally full of Ethan, i love you but there's only so much i can do if you're making like you, that argument you know that right like at a certain point you're an adult and the words that you're saying are going to be perceived by people in a certain way i can't constantly tell my c community to shut the up like right, well, which i have listen, and i, I think do, they uh, should but in at the end of the day it's because i know you personally and i think your heart is in the right place but they don't know so it's hard it's hard for people to to view what you're saying you know, beyond your words. You the perspective you disagree that's it i mean what the okay. f do you want from me okay but do you but do you get do you get where i'm coming from like that's why I i'm agree, trying I to understand your analysis dude okay i i I'm understand trying, your analysis i don't want to i don't i don't want to I don't want my community to hurt your feelings. I don't want your feelings to be hurt Dude, either. They're not hurting my I think feelings. They're, they're fucking, I think, they're monsters. They're like psychotic. I think, no, I think, I think you're a good not person. Not all of them, but there are a lot of them. And you okay. don't seem to care about moderating That's it at all. That's not true. Whereas There's, if you go to, if you're, when you're on my show, we really do care about what people say about you on yeah. Discord and chat. Think? And we moderate it to keep like a good environment, but you don't seem to care about There's it. There's no way I can do shut off my moderated? chat. I mean, I can put it in emote mode, but that's it. Do you not have like so Ethan brings up freaks and discord. He says to Hassan, your discord is filled with freaks. Brogan is a moderator for Hassan. Do you want to know what she's doing while this conversation is happening? Ethan rehearsed his same one point in the mirror before going on stream. I swear to God, Ethan crying over Palestinian kids that one leftovers episode were crocodile tears. I would respect Ethan much more if he just said he hated Arabs and went along with his day. Accusing people of racism for no reason, once again. Ethan is a minority? Yep, believe it or not, Jewish people are minorities. Remember, this is the stream where Ethan is eventually in tears due to the abuse that he's receiving. For someone who claims to care about victims, to care about marginalized people, Brogan seems pretty cruel. Most recently in Frogan history, she got into heat because she criticized Ludwig. What did she criticize Ludwig over, you ask? Donating to a Palestinian charity. 
I find ultimately, like, if I were to do a charity thing where the charity thing relies on your donations, it should be something where, like, 90 fucking 5% of people feel good and are down for it. And, like, ultimately, regardless of what you think, that is not the situation here. So I personally donated 10k. Uh, because I think it is worthwhile. And if you guys got some extra bread, I would recommend you donate. But I won't throw it on you, you know what I mean? No thanks. And some people are gonna say that, you know what I mean? That's why it's the difference. This is a cracker take. Difference between like, hey, I can put my money where my mouth is, but I don't need to put your money there. I don't need to enter a f debate cracker about whether that's worthwhile. Cake. Hey, I know Arabs are dying, but you know, I'm not gonna tell you to donate. Whoa, racism? Who would have thought? So I'm confused. Frogan talks about streamers who haven't said anything about Palestine, but she's simultaneously upset about Ludwig donating to a Palestinian charity, making his chat aware of the charity, giving it publicity. But because he doesn't want to hound his chat to give to it as well, you're upset. If you want to say that Ludwig is performative, that's fine, but why even attack him on the basis of his skin color? That makes no sense to me. Arabs are dying. Well, I hate to say it, but a lot of people are dying. Do you have a cracker take as well because you haven't given to charity or encouraged people to give to charities that go towards other groups of people dying around the globe? I'd like to know that. Do whatever you want. Interesting. I don't know. Like I said, Thinking about it, like you think of the think of the Twitch streamers that haven't said shit about Palestine. Think about the Twitch streamers that haven't, or like streamers in general. We're gonna go to YouTube as well. YouTube and Twitch streamers that haven't said shit about Palestine until engagement was threatened. You know, but the ones that got the most shit for talking about Palestine since October seventh have been me, Caroline, Hassan. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Streamers actually deserve to be fucking shit talked. Okay? Streamers that actually deserve to be shit talked. White saviors is like, oh, yeah, you know, me, I donated $10,000, but I'm not going to promote it. He is, he is promoting it. He did promote it. He just didn't hound people to donate. That's all. Just don't say you donated $10,000 then. Look, if you're not actively believing, if you don't believe in the cause, and if you're not against genocide at this point, like, keep your money. Keep your $10,000. Keep your, keep your little chump change. Like, the f you want me to say, like, congratulations? It makes sense that people aren't going to want to sit through their streamer unironically yelling at them to donate to a specific charity. People want to enjoy the streamer they're watching. It's leisure for them. Do you think Ludwig would keep or lose viewers if he did that? How would it affect his future ability to donate? Even if there are legitimate criticisms of Ludwig that he's putting up a front, trying to seem like a nice guy, trying to gain favor with certain communities, why would you turn to race as something to criticize him over? Your audience is learning that it's acceptable to criticize him using something he can't change. Why are you so angry about it? He donated 10K. You're sitting here with an emergency rent bar at the bottom of your stream. While also, we can see that you just had your nails done. Imagine having an emergency rent bar at the bottom of your stream while you still post pictures of you getting manicures that probably cost upwards of $80. Let's be real. And they're not even that good looking either. I mean, look at them. They're tacky and they're they look like claws. They look unsanitary. The real talk, I don't think that this is necessarily a bad thing. I think everybody needs a treat every now and then, but if your treat is getting your nails done, spending 80 plus dollars at least once a month to get your nails done, 
maybe you don't have the space to criticize somebody who gave 10k of their own money. So Frogan received backlash for this, and obviously she did a response. You can't be racist to white people. You absolutely can be racist towards white people. It's saying things like this that people use to protect themselves when they are being blatantly prejudiced. You can make the argument that the word cracker doesn't affect white people like the N-word affects black people. And I would agree with you. It's nowhere nearly as painful. But to claim it's not racism at all, it's just wrong. Even if, hypothetically, it wasn't racist or wasn't considered racist, it's still in very poor taste. You are still using an attribute that Ludwig can't change, his skin color, against him. How's that rent? My rent is paid, honey. My rent is paid, honey! Two wrongs don't make it right. He was bad and trying to appeal to everyone and not take a real solid stance, but Froger should have called him that. No, I don't give a shit about, like, uh, someone being called a cracker, okay? As, as someone who is white and has, like, used that word myself, I think that people that are using that to be like, this is a racial slur against white people is, like, f***ing ridiculous. One thing that bothers me about people like Hassan is that they identify as Schrodinger's ethnicity. Depending on the time of day and the context, people like Hassan can claim their whiteness as a shield. And then later on claim Islamophobia or racism or have others claim that on behalf of them. Anyways, I think I've made my point here. If everything I've shown you so far isn't enough to convince you that Frogan is an idiot and is incredibly dishonest, please take a look at the following. So are they going to eliminate themselves? Very cool joke, perpetuating a conspiracy theory that Israel attacked themselves on October 7th. Free him! Never mind. Why were you tweeting free him in the first place? From one Muslim girl to another, maybe don't tweet stuff like this when you have pictures like this floating around. And these are just a few of her likes on Twitter. It's game over for Israel. James Bond is officially fighting for Hamas. What was that about not supporting Hamas again? It's no exaggeration to say Gaza has broken out of its prison and is launching a war of liberation. It looks like resistance on an unprecedented scale actively retaking Palestinian land. Equating Hamas to resistance again, very cool. Remember that Israel has admitted to harvesting skin and organs from dead Palestinians to use for skin grafts and organ transplants, and the majority of the skin in Israeli skin banks was stolen from Palestinians they killed. Pretty sure this is anti-Semitism. It's blood libel. I don't know what this is supposed to be. I know it's a Hamas operative waving to a hostage. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments what this is supposed to mean. White people see Arabic words and go, OMG, terrorists, like a stupid villager in the 17th century accusing women of witchcraft. I'm sorry, what? 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 Hamas did a military operation against the IDF and unfortunately civilians died, some unknown but not insignificant amount due to the intended IDF fire. The IDF related by killing 10 times more so far with 99% civilian right. I'm not both siding anything. I'm glad this got community noted. Everything Israel said was proven a lie. No babies, no women, no Hamas attack on concert, no Hamas misfire on hospital. They made it all up, just like America did with the weapons of mass destruction they never found. Dude, what are these likes? What is going on? I will never condemn what this boy grows up to be. Remember this tweet? This man replies, I wouldn't go so far as to call them people. Guess who liked that tweet? Ding, 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 ding. I wanted to include more in this video, but I ran out of time. This video mostly focused on Frogan's recent events, which involved a decent amount of geopolitics, but it just scratches the surface. There's so much more out there. We didn't even get to talk about the Falling Star Award. <clears throat> Honestly, okay, it's it makes me really upset. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't want to cry, but it really does make me really upset.
If there's one thing I can leave you with, I hope it's this. The vaccines are here, masks are gone now, and people are back to work. Now maybe we need to get rid of some of these streamers that make up the real virus before we unleash another pandemic. Thank you. I'm... Um... Um... Uh... <clears throat> uh...